Okay, that was our manual. There we go, intelligent auto. Let's see what that does for the focus problem. Hmm, is that 30? I think we have an improvement. It's hard to tell. We're getting dark now, and I missed the rainbow. Well, let's get back to the dogs. Hey, guys! you in on them. Uh, let's just mosey on over there. I think it's uh, <sighs> I had a a nice clip there. On the clothes event. And our current equivalent to uh, the time of racking the roar. Ah. However, there's bird poop everywhere. Bear with me. Okay. Bird poop's cleaned off. Birds can sing you great songs. Well, 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 edutates you on the fine art of crunching a bone. Oh, and she knows lots about this being a super mum and all. Oh, and trust me when I say super mum, I mean it. 16 puppies at once. Can you imagine that? And she was still just, and this is my own screw up. She's still just a puppy herself, no less on her second batch. She had one at like 18 months, yeah, okay, no problem, and then, but she's like not even two and a half, and uh oh. <sighs> More stuff is working in the shop. Bear managed to break the door down and <laughs> get out into the yard where Mo was having her. <clears throat> no sex backyard break. Her chastity break. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Anyhow, it happened and I didn't get alerted until I came out and oh no. And here's Bear caught on the fence with his leg tore open. But not until he fired off six a record breaking 16 puppies with that that final act of coitus, right? <laughs> hey bear, it was, it was a remarkably good turn to an otherwise terrible, 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 sad story. The end of the bear juice. No more, ju no more bear puppies. Hey bear. <laughs> yeah, no more puppy juice. He still tries stuff. 
and, and his girls need it. Twice a year, at least. Hey, Bear. Yes, he, um, he takes care of Cindy. She demands it, and seeing how there's no genetic worries, well, there was definitely no psychological scarring like a father raping his daughter in, in human land. She did have one other mate, though. But he was neutered. And he looked just like her. First time she'd seen her, a dog just like her. Except for an Odie, not a mini. Yeah, I'm just medicating here, guys. We'll try and get to um, <clears throat> the Rachna Roar analogy <clears throat> with the heliospheric orbital path through this arm of the local interstellar cloud, which as many of you know, if you've been listening and paying attention, has been happening or watching your skies with astronomy tools you should have access to online because <clears throat> it's your money uh, and it's for the good of the collective that everyone knows and everyone learns and carries the message forward and who knows what solutions may be had in mitigation or preparation for the worst case because we all knew and we switched from bullshit like tying each other up in fucking wars other covetous cheat and gain acts by right, getting no one nowhere but dead we could be dealing with our survival challenges that are just right ahead no nobody knows exactly when because we have to look a lot harder we just know there's shit there now, and there was shit there before at the Clovis event 13,000 years ago. Which is still in the ground, that's how we fucking know. The younger Dryas die off, which also ended up in the glaciers coming back down. They've been receding since, what, 18,000? Five year, five millennium of receding before that. Okay, well, we're getting way too far off track here. <clears throat> it's been a stressful stay, like I warmed up, wind on the last upload. So, what I wasn't able to show you before, due to some errors. Um, okay. See if I can do this. <clears throat> so, let's just go back. Okay, so a supernova, huge fucking star, big enough to actually blow up and turn into a supernova, blows up <clears throat> and in uneven globulose as fusion bombs go, including the small ones we make here on Earth as we've studied them and blew them up in the atmosphere and paid attention. What's fused doesn't spread out evenly. It globs and it congels together and goes off in different directions. It's not uniform like the flash of energy isn't either, really. Neither is the matter. <clears throat> Neither are the chain reactions, and that's probably... Uh, <clears throat> that's probably the biggest component of why it doesn't break up evenly. So, there you go. Now you got a material spread about for a bunch of new stars. 
starts congelling into stars, planets, solar systems, and a whole lot more shit. So now you got all these stars sitting around. You got you got Sol here, the one that bright, shiny, heavenly host up in the sky during the day. You got the Cirrus system, A, B, and C. You've got uh, Alpha Centauri. You've got Altairs. Quite a few more that are, you know, say within 50 light years as well as some brown dwarfs. Some of them are Sears systems, three stars in one. Okay, now the shit that doesn't get captured into a big gobulo that uh, ends up into a solar system or a lonely brown dwarf or or even just a small little comet somewhere out there and never gets beyond that never gets up to big enough speed where there's enough mass and speed that uh, an available energy at some point say a pulsar or something or a supernova nearby that sparks the congealing condensed mass and there you go you got a sun well, or whatever you got the earth We'll just bring it back down to our own solar system. Okay, so you got that. Well, all the material that didn't... Okay, call that angel dust. The stuff that congeals back into a now-living... Functioning... Semi-independent... Being in the collective of... Of that supernova. And the collective of... Its galaxy and so on and so on. Well, let's digress again. Back, back to our own solar system. And the Archangel dust. The uncongealed supernova dust. that hasn't yet been reconfabulated and captured and, and, and put towards a, a star's life, a celestial life cycle. That's, you know... That would be stuff that probably didn't escape the core of the supernova. Which, depending on its size, it, it could be anything from... A super dense burnt out remnant that's cooled off because it couldn't support uh, reactions no more. To have materials you haven't even dreamed of, let alone held. To, uh, to something even more severe, like... You know, is big enough accordingly may have a singularity a black star it just sucks everything in until it too can't hold itself and or gets sucked in with another one just like it oh mosquitoes we're not gonna be able to finish this the mosquitoes are already sitting there bugging i want the bugging bears uh torn face there well, so we're going to wrap this up real quick here. Hmm. Now, why is that upside down? Hmm? Oh, there we go. The display was upside down. So, so just like 13,000 years ago, we picture the Milky Way, the way the glass gas arms go out like that. You've seen spiral galaxies. Same thing, the Coriolis effect and whatnot. So, so 13,000 years ago, we went through one of these clouds of Archangel <coughs> supernova dust, and all kinds of shit rained out. Different, different components at different times and. That may, may be your great flood, your deluge, because yes, water is a component of a supernova. Even comes out of stars. Amongst all the other shit. You had in the in the uh, Clovis layer, which is the Clovis event is you know, the namesake after. They they thought it was a comet at first, but then it's no no fucking comet could spread out like that throughout the atmosphere. It's this cloud of and, and in it, the stuff that they rained real heavy, some real blotchy 
cloud storm clouds that we came through 13,000 years ago because this is a long this could be like a thousand year journey you know we don't know because we haven't fucking measured there's there's, there's nano carbon not nano diamonds and there's uh zirconiums in the layer all kinds of shit that that is only supernova dust that's the only place where you're going to get it like that in the microscopic form spread everywhere as well as there was great fires and shit because huge carbon layer now was that after because the climate fucked up and a huge drought and later followed by a great deluge of water and, and, and whatnot well they, these things are entirely feasible uh, you know, and, and when you get this shit in your solar system until it gets all vacuumed up, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, your sun's gonna be darkened, and all kinds of fuck up before that, because when this is coming into the sun's atmosphere, the heliosphere, way the fuck out there, it's uh, about all, <clears throat> you get, disturbances to that like like our ionosphere think of it that way that's the heliospheric boundary where it's it's not not unlike that we'll we'll say picture that because because you're probably familiar with that that's blocking out some of the shit but first you get the highest energy shit which is cosmic particles which could be anything from gamma rays to accelerated protons and neutrons up past that level light speed basically light, light speed light wavelengths uh, that's cosmic particles that that's what we've been dealing with for 15 20 years it's been heating everything the interior of the earth like a microwave and the other planets and it has an influence on the Sun's photosphere of course it's energy so all that we've been going through the process where all that's changing that's you know <clears throat> starting to do a big feedback loop and this is rackman roar now it can get so heavy you can come across some parts of that cloud that are so fucking dense this is mostly at the nose of the heliosphere right that's that's the direction of our travel through this cloud and it's actually an intersection of about uh, Oh, what is that? Maybe 47 and a half degree intersection or so. If you're just trying to draw an average line of uh, intersection between the two travels. So they're not like doing a head on or a broadside. They're, they're coming in at an angle, right? Okay, so you're going to see you're going to see some real big activity like you do on the Aurora Borealis or the or the one at the South Pole. Not unlike that. You're going to see like literally a a winged planet like like your Nibiru thingy guys girls Nibirians hey okay. can be different colors depending on what kind of gas molecules are into the mix just like the Aurora Borealis if it gets dense enough it'll actually pour through just like a huge meteorite shower or vaporized comet would around earth or the sun so then you're gonna induce all kinds of direct electrical like a lightning strike uh, and lower levels of static discharge and then when you actually get it coming in you can actually get it thick enough that it'll actually picture a tank of water and pour colored water into it and watch how it goes out like a scroll and as it does that it'll darken the skies between us and the stars and it'll literally like a la like like a dragon's tail it'll literally eat up the stars what it's actually doing is blocking them out and I that shit takes that's a that's a big long winter period to clean up clean up the uh, disruptions it make all in the heliosphere right that's like our atmosphere only that's, that's the Sun's atmosphere again remember there you go, there's Rack and Roar. All the powers are destroyed. Powers being the fusion reactor, the heavenly host, 
powers being the cosmos. Right? All the stars and everything that's going off there, the supernovas, the magnetars, the, the black holes feasting, the quasars, the neutrinos. You, all that, that. That's the other powers. The gods, the powers. You know, and I've been doing my best to get the professional community to to realize that, okay, well, if this is a little too much for you to fathom, just just be making it your priority to try and have a look where you can. And and there you are. You'll you'll be the new uh, the replacement for the military industrial complex because for a fraction of the cost, and instead of destruction, you get you get real security from natural common unifying threats paid and addressed and as a spin-off at a far greater rate than any of the military kill crop you get something that will take you into Star Trek which as you know if you don't have that you're not gonna you're not gonna survive you gotta go out there you gotta go out and colonize other planets other star systems just to guarantee your own survival and all that shit you're learning Keep in mind, now you're just like in Star Trek, you can go and prevent other planets or species everywhere, other life from going extinct. Pay back everything us and our ancestors snuffed out in our own stupidity and, and, and inability. Collectively independent, we can do this shit. Maybe it's too late now, I don't know. At the very least, we can learn and make sure that what we learn about Ragnarok is brought forward. Clearly attempts have been made to do that, a lot of attempts, and a lot of attempts were made to, by those that sought to covet power and subjugation for whatever crazy thinking besides their own cheating, gain, and mental illnesses. Went to lots of effort to monopolize all kinds of belief systems and twist it around and chisel this and that away. Not much of this survived that was found a lot of the unfound stuff that is coming forward, written a long time ago, confirms what I'm saying. I can guarantee you there's lots of the shit in the Vatican's vault. Rat zinger, yeah, got that. Do something about it. And lots of other fucking places. The shit that they've dug out of the, out of the pyramids. Like that data block they dug out of the, the new, new, new basement under the Sphinx. Come on, what do you guys think that's for? Okay, we, we may have blown it, getting all caught up in the cheating game and, and, and the killing and this destruction and mistook that to satiate our innate survival need, but let's get it right. Let's redirect our mindfulness onto business that's at hand, whether you're too stupid to look and find it or not making a serious mistake if you choose not. Serious, grave, grave error. Ironically, <coughs> ironically the term Ragnarok, <coughs> which was a warning of this very fucking thing brought forward from my ancestors, speaks all about this. <sighs> and there's actually levels of it for the past events as well as the ones that were forecast that would come. I guess that they, also obviously too late, got enough of their shit together to at least look what was coming. <laughs> Doom, of the, <laughs> Doom of the gods! <laughs> I just love that. How ironic. As in, you gotta get your fucking act together and be your own fucking, you're not a child no more, no, there's nothing there. There's nothing there to save you from fucking extinction. abso fucking -lutely nothing. Not, not a damn thing is going to save you from this kind of extinction, but yourself. Get your fucking shit together. Quit fucking competing. Get fucking looking. Get looking really fucking hard. Get shouting it out to everyone, and I'm speaking to each and every one of us. Uh, collectively, it's is what it takes. Individually is how it starts.
Nobody's gonna save your ass but yourself. And if you can do that, it's not much more work to save a whole lot of other asses. Get it? Okay. That's, that's Ragnarar! So, uh, that's all I can give you right now. Bye-bye. Grow up. Hey. Hey, Cindy. Grow up, right? Grow the fuck up. Get the fuck off our planet, humans. You fucked up. Okay? The moon's waiting for you. Um, that's your, uh, that's your escape ship. Eh? Think Space 1999. Get, get going up there. That's, that's how you're, that's your plan B for now until you, until we're ready to take the training wheels off. And by were, I mean everyone. You take your own fucking training wheels off. Okay. <clears throat> Go. You're all unwelcome. Just want to be a bunch of fucking killers and destroyers. And that's not good enough. You want to get in the way of everyone that doesn't want to be like that and that is mindful. Go. Just leave. I'll tell you how to fucking do it, no problem. I'll give you the basic outline. Get your ass to the fucking moon. Shoot the equipment up there first on the mass drivers. Okay? And then your asses. Your robots and then your asses. Get up there, dig out under it. That's the first arc. Send them fucking shuttles out with the DNA samples. Okay, so there's our rainbow. Yeah, we're on auto focus this time. Can I get it again? We're gonna find out. There we go. Yes. Right over Anarchist Mountain. Okay, I know. I, what am I doing on this side? I said southeast of Anarchist Mountain. And, well, here I am. I'm on the northeast. It's just... It's fading now, but I'm going to go to manual. Let's see if I can have a look anyhow. Just, just for comparison. It's at 45, which is... Yeah, it's faded, so we can't really compare apples with oranges. Wait. Okay. Definitely at 